Welcome. This is a bit um, of a, a weird um, A2 physics video, really. It's, it's not a topic um, video, and it's not even in the astrophysics, although uh, I'm putting it in that playlist because it is uh, very close to um, other astrophysics um, areas. But you, I think there is one of the... Um, option topics, I think it is, I'm not sure if it's turning points in physics, I think it's that one, uh, that has special relativity uh, formula, okay, and you look at that. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to start off by looking at, uh, explaining the difference between special and general relativity, I'm not going to be going into formulas, um, because, uh, well, this video isn't about that, it's just purely understanding and background information uh, about it, okay? So really, it's just kind of a, a little bit of a guider to that. Uh, and uh, we'll be going on to discuss about time travel, uh, time warping, so what space time is, um, it, can we time travel with black holes, okay? Um, and then we'll be looking at, obviously, wormholes. And uh, through that we'll be looking at negative energy, looking at uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, and then finishing off um, by discussing how we can have um, negative energy, which kind of is Heisenberg's principle. Anyway, so we'll kick off with uh, special relativity. Now, in essence, uh, special relativity uh, states that uh, the, the time will slow down as you approach the speed of light. And if you think about that, that almost makes sense straight away, um, especially if, you know, if you've done physics. As we know, because um, obviously the, the people who will be watching this might be um, a variety of education, okay? So, light rays obviously travel, as we, uh, as you know, at approximately 3 times 10 to the 8 metres per second, so very, very fast. And, what, you know, if you're looking at something um, uh, far away, okay, or close, the, the light ray has to travel from that and back to your eye. Obviously, it bounces off the sun, etc, etc, but... It has to go to the object and then come off the object back to your eye, okay? But if you're going past something at the speed of light, your eye is going to be, you know, the, sorry, the light ray is almost going to become distorted because you'll be seeing it at one point and then seeing it really far over at a different point. So if you're travelling past something at the speed of light and that light is coming back to, and forwards at the speed of light, then it's going to seem like it's coming from a different direction. In other words, the distance will have increased. And this example of a, of a rocket kind of highlights that a bit more. Okay? And I'll prove that's the case. Okay, so this first rocket here, uh, obviously these two rockets are identical. One's just travelling at 0.5 times the speed of light. But this first one is travelling at the speed of light. And what, what this thing here is, is uh, my crappy attempt at drawing a person, okay? And the first rocket is, sta is stationary, or, or moving at much less than 0.5 times the speed of light. And what these two little dashes here mean are sort of mirrors um, and window kind of things, okay? So what I've got is a person observing inside the rocket and a person observing outside the rocket, okay? So inside the rocket, as you can see, uh, in stage one, uh, the, the light ray is going up and down, okay, which means if we call the distance from one plate to another, to, to mirrors, if you like, we'll call that distance d, okay. As we know, and uh, one of our super equations says uh, distance is equal to the initial speed times time, plus a half of 80 squared, well, well there's no acceleration, quite clearly, so distance is speed times time, okay. So therefore, if we want time, time is uh, distance over speed. Okay, we know the distance is 2d, because obviously it's to travel one mirror and then back down to the other mirror. Okay. And for the observer outside, that, that is exactly the same as well. Now, obviously, you can't see the light rays going up and down because they're going so fast. But you can tell that the light ray, you know, it'd be a shining, it would seem shiny, is the essence of the word. Uh, okay, so obviously, you can tell it's going up and down. Uh, but as we approach the speed of light, so in essence, what we're looking at is the perspective of the observer to the uh, um, outside the rocket and inside the rocket, okay? So now let's take into account uh, the rocket, the same rocket, exact same rocket, but it just is travelling at 0.5 times the speed of uh, light, okay? So very, very quickly. Alright, so the, the same light ray will start, the same light, a lot of the light ray will start in the same place, okay? But because it's moving so fast, the light ray becomes distorted. So it actually goes up to uh, the second mirror on the right. And then it comes back down. 
Okay, and obviously you just see the light ray going from one place to another, from the, from this mirror to that mirror, because it's going so fast, the eye tracks it is moving to that mirror. Okay, but actually we've gone this distance here, we call D, we call this distance D, and we call this VT, because it's a straight line. So, um, it's velocity times time, okay? But you apply the same theorem. Now, quite clearly, the person inside the rocket, because the light isn't really doing that inside the rocket, because the person is inside the rocket is viewing it from a perspective where it's travelling at the same speed they are, it doesn't seem distorted at all. But because we're, the, the person observing it from outside the rocket is looking in, and obviously they're having it to observe a, the, the rocket passing them at an immense pace, okay, um, the light rays become distorted. Alright, so what happens is the time dilates. So, in other words, the time is uh, d plus d, in other words, 2d plus vt over uh, u, okay, over c. Which is, which is over the same speed, but because the distance is greater, the distance has increased, the speed stays the same, so therefore time must decrease according to that formula. In other words, time dilates. Okay? So that is the theory, really, of special relativity. It's just how time appears to slow down as you approach the speed of light. Okay? So hopefully that made a, a little bit of sense. Now, as I said, I'm not going to come up to the... Uh, exact formulas for special relativity uh, and how to derive them because, well, um, this isn't what this video is about. Okay, so that's special relativity. That's essentially what special relativity is all about. But what we're going to look at now is something called a general relativity. And essentially, um, one of the things that we will talk about in um, gen general relativity is one of the things that we'll mention quite a lot is space-time. Now, before before we go into um, general relativity, I just want to allude to what this space-time actually means, okay? Well, to put it in a, in a single uh, kind of sentence kind of thing, space-time is your position in space and time. Now, we're actually given almost like coordinates for this, and it will help if you have been doing uh, vectors, okay? But I'll just give a brief overview um, as a recap and an introduction for those people who haven't uh, done it, okay? So basically, you should know, it's just the lowest I would expect you to know, uh, we've got our x-axis here and our y-axis, okay? So that'd be a 2D version, but obviously space is not in 2D. So we, have, we include this other um, aspect, so our x, y, and then Z. Z is almost like it's coming out of the paper or out of the screen, okay? And Y is going up and X is going across, okay? So as long as you get what this X, Y, and Z means, okay? When we do a position vector, uh, it's X, Y, Z. So it's, it's position in the X, position in the Y, position in the Z. So that's a very, very brief overview of um, a vector coordinate, okay? And we apply this to space-time, because that's a position, that is a position, well, a position in space and time, so we need to add the time factor. So instead of x, y, z, the position vector becomes x, y, z, t, okay? Where x is your distance in the, your position in the x direction, uh, y is obviously position in your y direction, z is position in your z, and t is your position in time, okay? Right, so that's what we mean by space-time. If you were to uh, calculate space-time, you would get... Uh, something like that. And obviously if you were to calculate the magnitude of space-time, well you just do the magnitude like you do in your vectors, okay? So that's essentially, as I said, what we mean by space-time. Now, this um, general relativity, the best way to explain it is essentially general relativity goes around the, the warping of space and time, in other words, the warping of space-time, okay? And essentially what happens here is um, It warps, yeah, warps space and time, and this is caused by the energy and the mass that is inside our universe. Okay, and I'll just draw a little diagram because we can observe this um, in our universe. Okay, so choose a coloured pen here. So imagine our space is something like this. Okay, and as I said, it, the space time, which is what this uh, these lines are meant to represent. Okay, so. 2D perspective here. This dip here, which is 
what this is going to represent, okay? This dip in space time, okay? So there'll be planets here, you know, be planet one, planet two, etc. What we've got here is we've got, we could have Earth here. Now, obviously, it might not be as displaced as that in space time relative to whatever you might be looking at, okay? But in terms of how we want to view it, okay? What we see this as is uh, general relativity, we, we see it because it's a spending of space and time, it, it causes x rays and light rays to bend, okay? So, around the Earth, for example. So, if you've got a light ray here, it might bend slightly. Now, it may only bend by a, a, a thousandth of a degree, this light ray or x ray or whatever it might be, okay? But it still becomes distorted, and that is to do with uh, the warp space time, okay? But you may be going, ah, well, I've watched Star Wars or, you know, something like that. And when we talk about warped space-time, the main thing that we talk about is, is wormholes, okay? Now, granted, I will be going on to that a little bit later, but wormholes requires a whole new diagram. Um, and really, that would kind of distract from what I'm talking about now, okay? So, I will do wormholes, but uh, I'll go on to them a little bit later on in the video. Um, okay? So, you may be going, anyway, uh, you know, the spending of space-time is huge bends. I mean, that, that's, a, a, you know, a warped space-time, but it's not, it's not very, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's not very really effective, okay? It's not a great magnitude of uh, warped space-time. The light ray bends. So what? How's that going to help us? I want to travel back in time. Well, we're going to come on to that as well in a minute. But, essentially, to warp space-time enough to be able to time travel, um... Yeah, sorry, to keep, yeah, to create wormholes and stuff, we need a huge amount of, um, of gravitational forces, okay? As I said, these light rays are caused by gravitational forces, but we generally consider them to be through warped space-time, okay? Um, but the gravitational forces in our neighbourhood, which is, a neighbourhood is a collection of planets in our galaxy, okay? The um, gravitational forces are so, so weak, well, obviously they're very intense, you know, very big, but in, con in the uh, context of the whole universe, our gravitational forces are uh, very, very weak. So, they're, they're not strong enough to warp space and time by such a significant amount that we can uh, produce warp holes. Now, obviously, the... the, the what because what we, this is warped, okay, I'm not saying it's not warped, but we need it to warp it the other way, to jump from one side of the galaxy to the other, which is what a wormhole is. Okay, um, yeah, so, but there are forces which are big enough to produce uh, such energies to warp space and time by such a significant amount that it will allow these events to occur, such as the Big Bang Theory, obviously, uh, the Big Bang is quite a big force, as you could probably guess, okay? Now, one of the theories, uh, obviously, Einstein, um, the, the genius that he quite was, um, he said, we can never go faster than the speed of light. In other words, we can never go into um, the past and return to the future. Because to go into the past, we would need to be going past the speed of light. And for a rocket to go faster than the speed of light, we would need infinite power, okay? Quite clearly, we can't get infinite power because it's so big, we can't go faster than the speed of light, okay? So, you know, bit of a, bit of a guide there, okay? So, there was this um, uh, chap called Gödel in, it was in 1800s, okay? 1840, I think it was, to double check that. He hypothesised that um, we could go back in time if the mass, um, if the universe was rotating, the mass in the universe was rotating to rocks, you know, planets, etc., rotating around each other, okay? He said, in theory, uh, for we, essentially you could come out, you could set off in a rocket and come back the previous day, okay? Um, that's what he hypothesised. Now, I'm not going to go into the, in, into the uh, calculations of that, but basically, um, his, through his calculations, uh, manipulation of general relativity, okay? Because uh, obviously general relativity, he said, had formulas. This Gödel person, came along and manipulated these formulas uh, to show that his idea of the manip of the rotating universe could actually mean that we could time travel into the past, 
okay? Uh, but his uh, calculations also showed that the something called the cosmological constant, which we uh, generally consider to be zero, is actually very, very big, okay, in his calculations. So therefore, even though it proved that potentially um, time travel into the past was possible, the fact that we have a, a gravita uh, sorry, a cosmological constant, which is so big through his calculations, uh, that suggested that maybe his theory wasn't so correct. Now, there, as I said, there were many, many aspects to his calculations which said, yes, it is correct. But the fact that his cosmological constant was uh, very, very big suggested, well, possibly not. Okay? So, that's a theory about time travel. But another theory that um, could suggest time travel is uh, something called string theory. Now, string theory is a, a very, very interesting topic and one that even uh, S Stephen Hawking agrees that potentially uh, it, it could allow time travel. And you go, how the hell could a string allow time travel? Because essentially, string theory is uh, uh, the idea that cosmic strings, which are, uh, well, you hear the word string and that just comes from their size. They are about the same size as uh, a bit of string, okay? But the difference is, obviously, they're not made of little bits of string. They're, they're actually, um, they're, they're just cosmic strings, okay? They're, they're very, very uh, tough, okay? They're, they can withstand huge um, numbers of tension, okay? A few billion, billion tons of tension in the size of a string, so you can imagine how hard uh, that is, okay? So it's, it's quite difficult to break, okay? Um, and basically, if these two, if these... Um, cosmic strings went very, very close to each other at the speed of light. Um, because they are uh, distorted and curved, they could essentially bring about the situation where we are able to travel back in time. And that links in very nicely to Gödel's idea of um, time travel through his rotating mass universe, which obviously, to have a rotating mass universe, your universe needs to be distorted as well, okay? So, for that to happen, that's why his theory has not been completely disregarded, even though his calculation of the cosmological constant was not zero. Okay, so a little bit of information there. Now, as I said, I won't go into too much d detail about string theory because it is very, very complicated. I just want to give a bit of an overview um, to the people, you know, who's probably watching this video. No, obviously not, you know. Uh, people that are not going to be giving them any help, stuff them, hey. Uh, anyway, so essentially, what if you know these the strings, cosmic strings are really very, very close to each other, they can combine with the idea, because they, they are very close to the idea of a uh, girdle's rotating universe, and both that the fact that they are both distorted and um, curved, they could potentially uh, yeah, allow us to time travel into the past and obviously the future as well, okay. So, hopefully that kind of made sense. Um, so, I'm just going to rub all this off the board now, um, and then we will get up with explaining wormholes and going on to talk about Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, uh, which requires the use of negative energy and negative mass, which a little bit of a heads up we get from um, quantum mechanics. Okay, so as I said, I'm not be going into any uh, detail in, in, the, in the rest of this video either. It's just purely uh, knowledge and interesting facts. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hopefully um, it's been helpful and we'll see you in the next video.